Hey, it's been a few days. Um, so I just got back from the doctor and had some CT imaging of my chest and other things done. But uh, I'll talk about that a little bit later. But today, two things, maybe three. Um, I want to check this Quantum 4 front. We're gonna do the quick test with, uh, we're gonna try and figure out how fast it actually goes using math. Then also, something appeared in the driveway yesterday. So I'm gonna show you that. And then probably also quickly, we're gonna look at the pink soccer chair, the one that got destroyed in the green van. And uh, yeah, so I think that's what we're doing for right now. I'm filming this all in one day. I don't know if I'm including any old footage, but uh, yeah. I'm getting dangerously close to making intros on videos now. I've never wanted to do the YouTube thing, but I think that's what you're supposed to do. Tell them what you're gonna tell them, tell them, and then tell them what you told them. Uh, I don't know, let's go outside. Oh, you will not catch me saying, let's get into the video, or let's get started, or anything like that. <laughs> Although I did just say all those things. It's still light outside, um, so. Um, may have purchased something from Craigslist. I you a penny for your thoughts. I get change. <laughs> so the uh, Amazon Flex thing, I've got it set up with a motion sensor and this skill called Smack Talker. So every time you walk through this room, it tells you some random different insult. It's pretty amazing. Um, yeah, so found a van. Real quick, I did get a new camera. It's more of a pro-level camcorder. So throughout this video, you're gonna notice that some of the audio sounds strange, and maybe it's out of focus when it's sitting on a desk and talking, or I'm talking to it. Uh, I'm still learning the settings on this thing. There's a few things that this camera you have to pay attention to that I didn't have to on the other ones. Uh, yeah, just fair warning. I know some stuff's out of focus, and I know the audio sounds strange. I've got an adapter coming so I can get my microphone put on this thing, and we can get some better audio. But just wanted to let you know up front, uh, the image quality and the color grading and some of the audio is gonna be a little bit off <laughs> from how my stuff normally is, but this thing has significantly better image stabilization. And that's one of the reasons I got it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just wanted to break in and tell you that real quick. It is a 2002 E350, so one ton running hardware, uh, eight lug wheels. Those are seven lug um, hubcaps off of an E250, but it's got a full nine inch floor drop. And uh, yeah, let me get it opened up and let's take a look inside. Got one of these Rikon style lifts in here right now. Um, it's only a 600 pound capacity lift. It's one of the ones that folds in half. So I will probably have to upgrade that before I'm able to get the bounder and other things in here. It originally had a UVL on it, and that got messed up and removed, and then they had this thing professionally installed. It has the uh, automatic doors and the brackets. Um, they just weren't attached to the new lift system. So these things do still operate, and all the hardware and the control board and everything is in here for this. Um, but for now, let's see here. So that's the other thing too, the platform is a little bit short. Um, it's like my old red van was actually, uh, with the length. So all you have to do is turn your chair sideways a tiny bit. And then your caster wheels will clear that. So here we are. Um, it's got a full nine inch floor drop. So you can see, well, the carpet makes it a little hard to tell, but um, we've got our uh, drop right here and it covers the entire front of the van. These two seats are removable and interchangeable. There's, there's another one in the garage that would normally go right here, but I'll probably never use that. The height of the steering wheel is such that I can get under the wheel and drive this just fine from my chair. So essentially I'm gonna have to install hand controls in here. I've already got a few sets of those, so no big deal. And then we'll have to install an easy lock on the floor. As far as getting the power doors hooked back up, shouldn't be too big of a deal. Whoops. Um, Oh yeah, John, I still have your tie downs. I'm sure you know that. We've got the control here left over from the old UVL system. And this is actually the exact same control system that the white van uses right there. So I'm super familiar with the wiring and everything on this setup. So it's gonna be pretty easy 
to uh, get the power doors hooked back up and get them integrated with this lift. These lifts do have the ability to uh, control doors and things like that, so no big deal there. Um, got a bench seat here in the back. That's our stock floor height right there. Um, but yeah, I should probably get this seat pulled out of here. It's gonna be a few days or weeks or whatever until I heal a little bit more. Um, but yeah, and it's got the same style buttons that the other white van has as well. CD and cassette, welcome to 2002. And the sweet thing is it already has an exhaust system. It's not a loud one. It's like a super turbo type setup, like a circular super, super turbo muffler, which is exactly what I would have put on here anyways if it didn't already have it. But yeah, it's got 90,000 miles on it. And I, it's 2002, so I haven't had a van with this little use or wear on it in a long time. So yeah, I'm super happy. Um, just super basic controls in here, nothing to break. No crazy electronic touchscreen stuff. Um, both of these seats have the uh, height and floors on them. There's wheels built into these seats. So when you pull the latches and take the seat out and flip the levers up all the way, wheels actually pop down on the back and the front. Oh, looks like we've got some tie downs down there. Sweet. I haven't seen this thing in the daylight yet. Ashtrays, <laughs> I remember when that was a thing. Uh, nice. Let's get out and look at the back. Yeah, so it's got basically brand new E-rated tires on it. Um, I would like to go a little bit wider on these just because this van is so heavy. Um, but I think these will be all right for now. Um, it actually rides really well and was pretty stable when my friend was driving it. So not too worried about that. But at some point in the future, we're going to need to ditch these pizza cutters and uh, get something a little bit more robust. This thing is incredibly tall from the outside, though. <laughs> Look at how high the seat is. So it's a NorCal conversion, which is a really high quality one. So you can see your original floor height up there, and then the drop comes all the way down, and then they put the seats on top of these frames, and they weld in these clamps here on the bottom for easy removal. But I mean, look at this thing. It's just so clean everywhere. Um, yeah. Might have to do something about that connection point right there. That could definitely use a little bit more protection. <laughs> oh, whoa, I just realized it has a popper on this door latch. There's a solenoid in there that can actuate this. That's pretty cool. Yeah, because normally with these, you just have to remove the, um, the striker plates, and then the whole thing is held shut with this. But I guess this one's slightly newer, so it actually had the door latches. I'll have to see if I can get that working. But yeah, this van does not have the door latches. It's held in with the same arms. So if you pull on this, it'll actually like move a little bit. Are you ready for another insult? Let's see what Alexa has to say to us. My middle finger gets a boner every time I see you. <laughs> can't make that stuff up. Plus keyless entry. I can't even think of how long it's been since I've had a vehicle with this. Yeah, so I bought that thing off of Craigslist. It was $7,000, which is probably more than I've spent on almost any vehicle that I've ever owned. But to be honest, I mean, it's probably worth at least 12 grand or so on like the open market as far as wheelchair vans go. There's a few little things with the power doors and whatnot that would need to be fixed. But um, the guy I bought it from, he actually, <laughs> So he got the van and then I guess it had a UVL. So he paid someone that works for a wheelchair company to on their off time basically to remove the UVL and then install a new lift in there and do some of the wiring and all that stuff. So he paid to have all that stuff put in and put tires on it and a bunch of other random things. So he was like, I want this to go to someone that is going to use it for what it is, a wheelchair van. He actually had it listed for I think 7,800 or 7,500 or something like that and someone wanted to buy it from him, he said he made the guy really mad, but he wouldn't sell it to him because the guy wanted to take the lift out and use it as a camper van. <laughs> He's like, no, 
I, I spent all this work and time. I want this to go to someone that can actually use it. So good on you, Craigslist guy. Um, that worked out for me, <laughs> finding it. Um, yeah, so I mean, a few little things here and there. I'm gonna have to have an easy lock installed. I can put the hand controls in myself, no big deal. Um, and I'll actually do that in another video because uh, I think that's kind of an interesting thing to show. Um, I'm probably, I don't know when I'm gonna be able to do it though. Oh, so yeah, I went to the doctor. No cracked ribs, so that's good. It's just all muscle injuries right now. They found some other things that like, well, let's just say I'm gonna see a cardiologist here soon. <laughs> um, but yeah, they found some other random stuff and uh, it was funny, the radiologist didn't realize that I was in a wheelchair and he's like, your spine, like it, it's all screwed up. I'm like, did you not see the power chair that I came in with? He's like, oh, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but anyways. Uh, so yeah, finally got a van. That thing's gonna be reliable. It's the, okay, so gearheads out there. It's a 5.4 V8. Before you freak out, they never put the three valve 5.4 in the vans. Uh, they went all the way up to 2012 before they discontinued making the vans all together, or I think they went with a different engine, so, somewhere in there. But the three valve engines with the cam phaser issues were only in the pickup trucks or some other vehicles, but they never put them in vans. So I verified that for sure. Because while the old 5.4s were a really reliable engine, I mean, there was a few build dates that had issue with spark plugs shooting out of the heads and stuff. Those was mostly the V10s. But these ones pretty much only have issues with the coil packs dying. No big deal. You can pull off the cover and replace them while you're sitting in the driver's seat. Uh, but no cam phaser problems, so we're not gonna have to worry about that. Only 90,000 miles on it. Um, I hopped in that thing with my friend and the owner was like, all right, go for a drive. So it was just the two of us in there. He tied down my chair and we went and railed on that thing. Um, it's solid, there's no squeaks or rattles. We hit some driveways at a pretty good clip with uh, you know a decent amount of speed and it handles everything fine. Tracks straight down the road. It's not made by Chrysler, so the steering wheel won't randomly disconnect itself. That's always a bonus. Um, but yeah, even though it's a one ton, uh, it rides really nice. I need to run the thing across a scale. I think it might be heavy. Like. I'm estimating that thing's at least 7,000 pounds. Um, so we'll find out on that. Some of the commercial cutaway chassis on these had a gross vehicle weight of up to 10,000 pounds on the Super Duty vans. So we'll find out on that later, but I think it's gonna be a good reliable thing. Depending on weight, it's got 373 gears in the back um, and it does have overdrive with a locking torque converter. So I'm not sure what the mileage is gonna be. That engine in like an Expedition or something like that is capable of low 20s on the highway, but that's a much lighter vehicle. So I'm guessing maybe 15 combined for miles to the gallon, which is still way better than the white van. That thing always gets 9.8, no matter what. <laughs> so, but yeah, uh, it'll be nice not having to worry about that. And I'm gonna ditch the white van. Um, I don't think there's a reason to keep that now that I have a reliable vehicle. Plus I'm back in town and there's bus service, lift, that's L-Y-F-T. Uh, there's trains and everything. So if I do need to go to the parts store, I can just take that. And I don't think there's a reason to have two full size vans sitting in the driveway. So I, I can dump that white van in a weekend for like 1500 bucks, no problem. I will make sure whoever buys it knows. Yes, it is technically a wheelchair van, but it may give you troubles. Um, I did, however, fix the relays and the issues that were sticking on the main pump on it when I had an issue a few months ago and the hydraulic pump wouldn't shut off. But anyways, uh, enough yapping about that. Super happy. Um, let's, uh, let's go in the garage and take a look at that pink chair real quick. If you are going to be two-faced, at least make one of them pretty. <laughs> let's look at the old pink soccer chair. By the way, apparently I'm in the repair business now. A friend brought this over and I'm gonna do some programming on it. Oh, here's the hood. Um, that's gonna go right up there, I'm pretty sure. Um, yay. Okay, so pink soccer chair. This thing got destroyed. This is part of the motor casing on this side that snapped off when I drove into a tree and this flew forward and ruined the passenger seat in that van. Let me see if I can get it to move forward here. The frame on this chair is bent, the suspension's bent, the motor housings are cracked. Um, I don't know if you can see here, the whole thing is sitting kind of crooked. Uh, let me open the garage door and get some more light. 
But yeah, so you can see here, this caster wheel is not even on the ground. Uh, everything is completely twisted. The actual frame of the chair is tweaked. It's like sort of like a trapezoid. It's been shoved over this way. Like the bottom stayed solid and this part shifted over. Um, so yeah, the wheel's touching the motor on that side. And then if you look down here, you can see right here, if you follow this ar arm down, there's a bar right there. That's supposed to attach to the motor right there. And that is what this is. So it basically just sheared that right off, which means that gearbox housing is now toast. It's not really, it's not really a thing to be able to swap motors onto different gearboxes on these chairs, because they're kind of built as match sets. And if you try to swap things around, they don't really work right. It doesn't really show up on video, but yeah, there's geese. Um, actually, let me set the camera on the floor. Okay, there we go. The camera's level, so you can see how the chair is like crooked. And um, yeah. Not exactly in premium condition anymore. I think I'm gonna hook up to my BiPAP for a little bit, rest, and then, I don't know if the street out here is a good spot to do it or not, but uh, I'm gonna tape off the wheel with some colored electrical tape on this chair, and then we'll run out and um, try to get an RPM measurement and use some math with a wheel speed converter and see if we can figure out actually how fast that thing goes. Okay, we've come down to a random parking lot. It is slightly downhill, but that's okay. I wanna give this thing the best possible chance for going faster. And then also we can check the uphill speed as well. But I realize that going straight for 30 seconds takes a lot of real estate. So let's do this. So the way this is gonna work, I've got some electrical tape and a silver Sharpie. I'm going to tape off a spot on this wheel, put a mark on it with a Sharpie, and then film it with my phone. And then we'll be able to count the number of rotations and then calculate that based on time, how many rotations we're getting. Then you measure the diameter of the tire, do some conversions, and you have RPM. Well, actually you have RPM, but then you measure um, the diameter of the tire, do some calculations, and then you'll have your actual speed. I just realized I forgot to set my phone to 60 frames per second because if I don't, it'll be blurry, so I gotta do it again. It basically says 5.9, sometimes it goes to six, but uh, it never goes above that. And I really feel like we're going faster than six miles an hour. All right, I think we've got some data. Let's go back and run some numbers. All right, let's see what the cranky one in here has to say as we pass by. You stare at frozen juice cans because they say, concentrate. <laughs> you stare at frozen juice cans because they say concentrate. Oh wait, this camera has a fancy mode for this. Wait for it, wait for it. Ha ha! Whoop. Coming off the tripod, there we go. Night vision! <laughs> Echo, turn on the office. All right, I don't remember if the computer's turned on or not. Um, nope, gotta let this thing boot up and then we're gonna airdrop those video files to the Mac and do some math. Okay, we've got all the clips in here now. So, looks like, I'm gonna wait till I get up to speed. Uh, this clip's only, oh, these clips are only 33 seconds long. I'm not sure if that's enough. Well, I guess we could do 15 seconds if we need to. Um, let's see here. 
dang it, that's only 25 seconds. Um, so I guess we're going to do this in a 15 second cycle. Um, dang it. I should have been counting. There we go. Our mark is straight down right there. So we'll cut that. Split. And we're going to do 15 seconds. Okay. That's actually really hard to see. Let me do this frame by frame and see if I can catch it here. One, two, three, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46. Yeah, not quite 2.5. We'll call that 37.2. Let me notate that here. Okay, so that's 37.2 times four blocks of 15 to make one. What's 37.2 times four? 37.2 times four is 148.8. 148.8. Okay, so that means those tires are turning 148.8 RPM. So now we need to measure the diameter of our wheels and then we can do some calculations to figure out what that transforms into for distance. All right, the way we're gonna calculate this is from the floor to essentially the top of this wrench. So I'm gonna stick this in here because it's a flat thing and hold that pretty much level. We're gonna verify it's level first by measuring each side here. It's looking worth like 13.25 or 13 and a quarter. Let's see. Might be a hair more. Yeah, let's go with 13.25. Uh, I think that's going to get us within the ballpark here. Again, I'm feeling extra crippled right now. So getting on the floor and actually making sure that wrench was level is not really easy or holding the tape up next to the wheel crossways. But I think over the six inches that that wrench is wide, measuring it on both ends should give us, um, uh, what am I trying to say? The pro approximate diameter. Okay, let's try this one. <laughs> Not quite the same, but uh, RPM is 148.8, and our ratios are one to one, one to one, tire diameter 13.25. I know there's a way to do this by like, multiplying by pi and all that, but my brain's not up for that right now. So, um, where's the calculate button? Uh, oh, there we go. Wait, 5.9? Really? That says 5.9. Uh, interesting. 5.9 miles an hour. That's exactly what the speedometer on the chair was saying. So now I'm wondering, the permobiles that this thing goes the exact same speed as, I know those are 6.5, because I've calculated it, so I think I have. I'm sure there's probably some margin of error here that might result in a half a mile an hour difference, but near as I can tell with this rudimentary thing, only using a 15 second clip, um, the speedometer is correct. <laughs> huh. I could have sworn that chair was faster than that. It feels faster than six miles an hour. I mean, I like to think that I can tell the difference between, you know, five and six miles an hour. Of course, 6.5 and six, maybe, I don't know, but interesting, huh? Well, there's that, I guess. So I guess the speedometer on those chairs are accurate. Uh, anyways, there you go, Franklin. 5.9 is correct, I guess. Um, <laughs> sorry if I don't seem like my normal self. Pain does weird things. And, um, well, the CT scan, the CT scan showed some things that were not related to the accident. Um, among other things, they were like, oh, you have an enlarged heart and early stages of congestive heart failure. Seven years ago, they said the same thing, but they did all the tests and showed that my heart is fine. And they thought it might've just been a shadow because that time it was an X-ray that they, or was it a CT? Well, they thought it was a shadow or something, so after doing all the testing and stuff, they ruled that out. And I think they said something like, well, your heart might actually just be bigger than normal. I don't know if that's how that works, or if when you see enlarged heart, there's signs of like stretching or something. 
I mean, I'm no radiologist, but regardless, I'm still gonna go to a cardiologist again and get that checked out because uh, congestive heart failure is not something I like hearing or enlarged heart. Um, so we're gonna deal with that. And then apparently the bottom of my lungs are folded a little bit. They said they're not collapsed, but apparently that's something that's, well, it tends, it can happen to people of my build when they're in a wheelchair all the time. I, uh, I'm six foot one, but I only wear 29 length pants. So my torso is really long. And I guess most of my organs are like shifted lower than most people. So as a result, when I'm sitting down, I think that sort of puts pressure on things or whatnot. But they said some respiratory PT therapy could help with that. So I'm definitely gonna check into that as well. And then there's some sort of weird herniation or something going on too, so. And they confirmed that my spine is messed up, of course. But uh, yeah, so gonna deal with those things. I'm not too worried about them. I mean, the breathing stuff I definitely wanna take care of, but. They said because of how my lungs are sort of like folded or crumpled, they couldn't tell if there was fluid in there. But I'm not wheezing or anything. Um, I do cough a lot, but I kind of do that anyways with the asthma. So, I don't know. A few interesting things. Uh, <laughs> but I think the plan is for now, I'm going to work on getting hand controls installed in that van. Which, that's something I can actually do myself and it doesn't require leaning over. Uh, I think what I can do is just get a transfer board. I'll get someone to pull that seat out and back so the space is open in front of the driver's wheel. And then I will slide over to the floor and then I can sit fully upright and lean against the side of the van on the inside and should be able to get the steering column and stuff taken apart. And <coughs> <coughs> speed of coughing. And I should be able to get that stuff installed, I believe. So anyways, yeah. I, like I said, the brain fog's a little bit weird, so this video I feel like I'm, I made bullet points in my head of things I wanted to talk about, and I don't normally do notes or script things, but I kind of feel like that's how this is coming across. But anyways, still doing good, slowly recovering. Oh, one interesting thing, let me grab it real quick. I decided in light of recent events and getting potentially stuck in the woods with maybe no cell phone service, I need to get, um, sort of a backup plan. So, I got this thing. This is a Spot, I think it's a Spot X communicator. And what this thing is basically is an emergency beacon, but it has satellite text messaging. And with this thing, you can get emergency rescue assistance, roadside assistance, and all kinds of stuff. And you can text directly with emergency personnel. And even if you are in a place with cell service, you can still use the services that come with this thing. And it comes with like, I forget what it was. It was a hundred thousand or a million dollars worth of like helicopter evac insurance. They'll go down trailways to rescue you and your motorcycle or bicycle or just your person, ATV, truck, whatever. So I think carrying this thing around, it, there's a spot in my backpack um, that it goes now and this thing's always with me. But uh, I think having this thing and the uh, rescue coverages that it comes with is probably a good idea. The service on the device, um, I forget what the pricing is on that, but all the emergency rescue insurance and all that stuff, I think it's somewhere around 85, 90 bucks a year or something like that. So a little more than AAA, but it's gonna cover me for roadside assistance up to five uh, instances per year. That's fuel delivery, lockouts, all that stuff. Um, I'll let you know what I think of it. I've been playing around with this thing. And it comes with its own phone number. You can't actually call anyone, but you can text people. So I've been texting a few friends with this thing, and it's actually kind of a cool device. I mean, I like gadgets anyways, but... <coughs> Ugh, I'm gonna have to stop talking here. But I like the idea of having a little bit of peace of mind, I guess, with no matter where I'm at on Earth, even if they have to use a helicopter to get to me, um, you know, I'll be covered for things. Because some of the trails and stuff... Some of the trails and stuff that I run around on here have questionable cell service, and trying to call people doesn't necessarily always work. So I think having a backup plan should be a thing. At least that makes me feel better. Um, whatever, but at least now that I know this is only muscles and not cracked ribs, I can do what I normally do to deal with muscle injuries. Uh, you know, heat and stuff like that, and kind of stretching and all that. So I think I can get this taken care of pretty soon and at least get to a point to where I can actually kind of <coughs> Where I can actually kind of do some things. Don't worry, I'm not pushing myself. I'm, I'm pushing myself right now. By trying to talk, 
I guess I am pushing myself right now, trying to talk when I clearly shouldn't be, but um, I'll catch you guys in a few days. Um, it'll it'll be sooner than later. Uh, we won't go another five days, I don't think, without a video, but I got some other things lined up that we can do here, even if um, I still can't get out of my chair or lean over and do stuff. But yeah, thanks for hanging in there. I'll catch you guys later. <laughs>